Welcome to another episode of Shocking Discovery. I'm JP from Northern Lights over Arkham, and I will look for so-called binder for their cards and try to find a good use for them in Arkham Horror the card game. We all have cards that get stuck into our binders, never to be used while building a deck for Arkham Horror the card game. We usually stick to the same old card combinations while building our decks, but sometimes it's refreshing to try out new combos. This time I will be looking at Mind's Eye. Let's start discovering new cards to use in our decks. The discoveries might be shocking. If you like my content, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Let's look at Mind's Eye a bit closer. Mind's Eye was released in the Weaver of the Cosmos Mythos pack of the Dream Eaters campaign cycle. Mind's Eye is a level 2 mystic asset. It costs 3 resources to play. It has a willpower icon for committing to a skill test. It has the tr ritual trait. It's a myriad card so you can include three copies of it into a deck and you only pay experience for the first copy. It comes into play with three secret counters. The card reads Reaction trigger When you would test intellect, combat or agility, spend one secret. Test your willpower instead. Free trigger Discard a copy of Mind's Eye from your hand place two secrets on this copy of Mind's Eye. Mind's Eye takes up two arcane slots. Mind's Eye is the first card in the game to take up both of the investigator's arcane slots. The symbol for double arcane slots has been around for from the corset, but this is the first card to use the symbol. At first Mind's Eye seems like a great card until you notice that it will eat both of your arcane slots. Arcane slots for mystics are the most important slot as many of the staple cards like Shriveling, Sixth Sense and Mists of Relay take up arcane slots. If you play Mind's Eye, you are locked out of playing any other arcane slot assets into play unless you have other cards that grant you extra arcane slots. One of the cards that grant you extra arcane slots is sign magic. It takes up a hand slot and grants you an extra arcane slot to use instead. The problem is that you first need to find sign magic and then play it. That chain of actions starts to feel quite slow and unreliable, so I suggest if you play Mind's Eye, you build the deck around playing Mind's Eye and a bunch of mystic assets to cover situations Mind's Eye can't help you with. As Mind's Eye uses secrets, you can combo it with the Seeker event Truth from Fiction to get more charges onto it. This, however, is not necessary as the other copies of Mind's Eye work as charging cards for the, their own. Mind's Eye lets your investigator work well as an all around investigator who can do basically anything to a limit if your investigator has high willpower. The willpower can be boosted with other cards like, for example, Holy Rosary and Four of Cups. The higher the willpower, the better your investigator becomes in doing any of the tests requiring you your other skills. At first, Mind's Eye looks a lot like a Patrice card. Patrice has a good willpower value and not so good other skill values. With Mind's Eye, Patrice becomes a generalist capable of doing anything well. Patrice also goes through her deck fast and should quickly draw the other copies of Mind's Eye to charge up the one played. Mind's Eye should be played on an investigator with a high willpower value. For example, Agnes is a good investigator to be used with Mind's Eye build. Her willpower of 5 makes her a potent all-arounder right from the moment you play Mind Sign down. The rest of the deck should be built to have loads of events and a few as 
possible assets that take up arcane slots. This way, you can use Mindsight to make tests that don't require any action compression. These can be done using events. Let's look at the Mindsight Agnes Baker deck I have been playing recently. As you can see, the deck has three copies of Mindsight. There are also a lot of cards that will boost your willpower, like the Holy Rosary, Peter Silvestre, level 2, and Four of Cups. As you will need to get multiple clues from some of the locations, there are two copies of Drawn to the Flame and two copies of Read the Signs. For fighting enemies that require you to hit them hard, there are two copies of Spectre Razor. And also, as Agnes can fight efficiently with the Meat Cleaver, there are two copies of Meat Cleaver in the deck. As Agnes can access her own ability when she takes Horror, that she can damage an enemy at your location. To compensate the cost of the events, there is also the Shining Trapezohedron card that lets you play events without paying for them. The deck also has one copy of Charisma, so that you can have Peter Sylvester and either David Renfield or Miss Doyle in play. Also David Renfield can boost your willpower. As the deck needs to draw, there are two copies of Scroll of Prophecies that help you find, out, find the Mind's Eye Fast and also the Jewel of Aureolus that lets you draw cards when you pull special tokens from the Chaos Pack. The deck also has two Relic Hunters, so you can have three different accessory items in play at the same time. I recently played a playthrough with this deck through the Murder at the Excelsior Hotel and I will add a link to the upper right corner for that playthrough and also I will add the link to the playthrough into the video description if you want to check out how the deck works. I hope you found something useful to try out in your games of Arkham Horror the card game. If you have a card you would like for me to get into use from the binder, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time.